three, two, one. Hey guys, it's Inka. Welcome back to another season of Trendy vs. Traditional, where I'll be making trendy interpretations of your favorite classics. As some of you know, last season I had a lot of different guests to represent the traditional end, but this season we have a very special guest. Here comes the boy. I've been here the entire time. Thank you, by the way, for immortalizing me in the previous season. I didn't die. I'm back and I'm here to cook traditional versions of your favorite dishes. Today we are going to be making... Fries! fries. Who doesn't love fries? I have like a list of cravings that I always have and fries is like on top. I don't know how you're gonna make a trendy fry. I, I don't even know what that means. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put a a twist on the definition of I don't fry. like when Inga throws these like little like sneaky words around. Am I up first? Thank you very, very much. Happy to be back. Let's get to it. Hello there, sweeties. We are going to be making some traditional fries on my end of the spectrum here. Now, in my opinion, what makes a good fry is something that's not too thick, not too thin, and has a really good crisp. So I'm going to attempt to tackle that today. Let's get into it. I am here. I have my potatoes. I'm going to be making tornado fries. I think they're still popular actually right now in South Korea. I recently produced a video, Fries Around the World, where you can actually see what the original one looks like. It's like this massive stick of potato chip french fry hybrids. So it's not gonna look like a regular fry. Now, maybe this is a, a topic of debate in terms of skin on, skin off. I like a just monotone fry, not a lot of skin happening. So first step is we're gonna peel some of these potatoes here. I'm gonna try and get most of the skin without taking too much of the potato meat off. Is it meat? Correct me in the comments if the inside of a potato is not called the meat. First thing I'm gonna do here is actually just pierce these little guys straight through. So now I have little potatoes on sticks. Here's a cool hack that I found on the internet. I wanna try and like do a little spiral down the thing, right? The hack is to use a cheese slicer. And actually what's gonna happen is we're gonna use this to essentially shave it off. Just don't shave off your fingers. I did a practice run just now and I almost did, so here we go. Wish me luck. If you're not making a mess, it's not traditional. See this little sprinkling? This is part of the process. And if you don't respect that, Click off of this video right now. You know the street food vendors that do this? It looks perfect because they use a machine. I am the machine today and I'm trying to master this, so I'm really trying here. So let's get started by just cutting these big boys in half. Then let's cut them into these kind of nice big rectangular shapes. What is this shape? you know, versions of things that I've done. This is definitely one that's like more focused on technique. I feel like normally we play around with the flavors or like the concept of it. This one is more like deceptively simple. You know what I'm saying? I'm just here imagining Chris having an easy time just slicing up the potatoes. Are you just chilling? Not too thick, not too thin. If anything, it's more important to just be uniform. Here's kind of what we're going for here. Look at this here. See that? Traditional fries here, not too thick, not too thin. We are preparing them to be boiled. And with that, we have finished cutting up our little fry babies. It's not perfect, but it's a little bit better. Hand sliced, y'all, okay? Did we not have budget for the machine? <laughs> This is not oil, this is water. Since you're so nice to watch this video, I'm not gonna stand here and make you watch me boil water, okay? Practice makes perfect. Take things slow, one slice at a time. <laughs> Ta -da! A potato that has been, hold on, wait for it. Chris, I'm coming for you. Now that the water is at a boil, we're gonna add a pinch or two of some salt. By the way, the recipe I'm following is a recipe that we'll link in the description. A trick with this is adding a little vinegar to the boiling water, which there's a chemical reaction that happens that helps the potato from completely breaking down like mashed potatoes. So we're gonna add about three tablespoons of white vinegar. I'm just going to gently 
lower these fries into some water here. I'm gonna lower that in. I don't know why I'm using this like I'm scared of a little hot water. I'm not scared. Gently, gently, gently. So these fries are gonna go in here for 10 minutes. This is where a lot of the cooking process is gonna happen because the best fries are the crispy exterior but like the light, fluffy, steamy potato interior. Check back in soon. All right, improvement. Look at this. This is what we're talking about. Work hard and you will be rewarded, duh. All right, so now that I've kind of mastered it a little bit, I'm gonna make a couple more. I'm pretty confident now. We're good to move on. The potatoes have finished boiling. All we have to do is just pull these fries out. They are fork tender. I know they don't look like fries. I need you to relax if you're in the comments like, those don't look like traditional fries. That's making me angry if that's what's happening. Now we just need to get these fries as dry as possible. If we're putting soaking wet steamy fries into an oil, you're gonna have a bad time. Next step is the oil. My potato sticks are now off to the side, safe and secure. For now, I am going to make the sauce. This is going to be like my secret weapon that hopefully will push me over the edge. But I'm gonna make a honey butter glaze, if you will, that I want to like just like paint across the fries. And then over here, I'm also just going to really quickly whip up the batter that I'm going to dip the fries in just to give it that like extra crunch. All right, folks, these fries are very dry. How dry are they? I'm gonna be honest, I didn't expect everyone to do that. Um, the fries are, I'm panicking a little bit. Uh, the fries are as dry as the, dry as the <laughs> yeah, God damn it. All right, so I'm gonna start with the sauce since that's gonna take a while to cook down. So over here, I'm gonna add some butter. Honey butter is a very popular flavor that's paired with the tornado fries, but usually it's in powder form. I should have used honey butter chips as a coating. No! Rule number one is we don't wanna overcrowd the oil. We need to give everyone room in the oil to swim around. Plus, this is only our first fry. This is a two fry fry. So I'm going to layer up a couple of these boys, about half the gang here, and we're gonna gently lower into our hot oil. Here we go, no turning back. First fry into the oil. That's a good noise. Let's turn this down. God damn it. Little steamy, oil's a little hot. I'm just going to grate some garlic in here. Ooh, that was a nice little plop. Smells like garlic bread. Garlic is in. So now I'm going to add in all of the sugar, actually. I know it seems like a lot, but it will be good. It's going to be sweet and salty. All right, I'm going to add some soy sauce as well. And it's smelling really good right now, so I take that as a good sign. And I'll also add a little bit of honey. That's what makes it honey butter. Well. That did not go quite as expected. Traditional fries, you need a little danger element. You need to be kept on your toes. We only need these in here for like 50 seconds, less than a minute. Let's get them out of there. Save the boys onto our paper towel line sheet. Oh yeah, look at this consistency. Already it's looking pretty good, but I'm gonna taste this a little bit. Oh, it's so sweet, okay. We're gonna let the oil cool down just a touch and we're going to move into our second batch of fries here. Second batch of fries going in. Fingers crossed this goes a little smoother. Easy now. You know, a lot of times with like trendier version of things, sometimes like the flavors are also like more complex. You know, I think people really like to really like go out there and try different seasonings. I hope our judge likes this sweet and salty. Like the goal is not to win but winning is nice, you know? We've officially first fried our batch of fries here. Next step is letting these fries cool down. We're gonna toss them in the fridge for like 30 minutes before we go in for our second fry to finish the job. But let's toss these in the fridge. See you soon. I don't know, I blew a kiss. Let it cook a little bit here, softly simmer. And then on this side, I'm just gonna make my batter really quick. Starting with an egg. Breaking that apart first and then adding in my flour and water. It's like fries dipped in batter. Is that weird? Is that weird? I'm gonna add a pinch of salt. That was more than a pinch, but that's okay. And then I'm also going to add in pepper. Give me one second. We are going to be 
Finally moving into our fries that have cooled down in the fridge after our initial fry. Like the first fry, we're gonna be working in two batches. Don't wanna overcrowd the oil. I'm not anticipating quite the uh, volcanic experience that the first fry was, but you never know. C'est la vie. I don't know if I'm using that phrase right. All right, add some pepper. More pepper. I think that's plenty. I just wanna make sure there's no lumps. Looking pretty good. Batter is done. Beautiful glaze. Oh, look at that color, you see it? It's like a beautiful caramel. All right, so over here, my sauce is still cooking down. It's still looking a little too liquidy for my liking, so I'm gonna keep reducing this. And then once it's reduced, I'm gonna pour it in a bowl, and then I think I can get frying. Second batch fries going in. Here we go, gently, gently, gently. I'm keeping a watchful eye on the oil. I would move my mic closer, but no one wants me to see take hot oil to the face. Isn't that right, everyone? Here we are. I have my beautiful potato spiral tornado thingies here. Batter, glaze over here. Look at this glaze, look at it. Oh secret weapon. Now I'm going to take one of these beautiful spirals. Oh, this beauty is grace. And I'm essentially just going to spoon the batter over it and make sure it's all covered like so. There's something about frying anything, but especially French fries. I want that smell all over me. I want to smell like I've been in the oil. I want to smell like I am a French fry. I didn't season this batter too much because I already have the glaze drain off the excess. Let it drip. Beautiful. Okay, and now it's going in. Here we go. Looking very close. Ooh, ooh, ah, in the comments. Ooh, ah, thank you. Let's drop them onto our paper towel line baking sheet. Gently without burning myself. Fries are looking good. What do the kids say now? Sheesh! already. Ooh. I will say I'm feeling pretty good so far. The glaze smells incredible. That improvement gave me much confidence, so not to make sure this tastes good. Looking at it and color looks pretty good. Ooh, la la. Oh, it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. It smells like a fry. I'm gonna let that cool for a little bit. I'm gonna glaze after I fry all of these up. All right, everybody, our second batch of fries are looking golden, crispy. Ingo, watch out, these look good. Toss them down here. Let's give a little off the elbow, a little salt bay. You know what, I, I, I burned this. Not to be played with. Feeling good, let's plate. I have my beautiful fries here. Some look better than the others. I'm going to glaze this one so I can taste it. You ready? I have my glaze here. Just essentially just painting it on a little bit. This sauce is very flavorful though. So I'm like, maybe I shouldn't go too crazy, but I also want to make sure every chip has it, so. I feel like I'm doing an injustice to traditional fries by like placing them. I feel like anytime you see traditional fries, they're just like slammed into a bowl and, and slid across the table. And then just on the side, let's keep it classic, keep it simple. And it's not open, okay. And here it is, my friend. Can I taste it? I'm gonna taste it. The beauty of it is that you don't even have to touch it if you don't want to, so. The flavor is good. I already ate most of it. I like to think that that's because it's really good, so I'm gonna glaze the rest of these. Less glaze this time, but I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. Make sure you get all that audio. Everyone, I present to you traditional French fries. Three, two, two one. one. Oh, where's your plate? I don't have a plate because it's finger food. Those look oh. really good. Yours smell really good. I guess we've arrived at the portion of our show where we have a judge come in and tell us which recipe they prefer, the trendy or the traditional. A day, come on in. I heard this some fries. You smelled it? Yep. Chris, you're alive. <laughs> Which one should I start with first? I don't know what's happening over here because the condiment looks serious. This is ketchup, okay? It's, yeah. <laughs> Let's dig in. Oh, nice. That looks nice shape. Thank you. Very Long, impressive. Thin. That's right. Oh. 
Ooh. I heard it. I heard little it. crunch. Mm. This is something I would compare to like rise at a diner. A diner is traditional, so I'll, I'll take that. And Brendy, here we go. <laughs> I don't know how to attack this. Should I pull it? Oh. oh. Hasn't even chowed down on it, and I'm hearing noises. Okay. Mm, I just got put on to the honey butter chips. <gasps> This is what it tastes like. A day we need an answer, we need a verdict. Which fry do you prefer? So when you think about how can you improve a, upon the fries that we're all used to, Inca just figured it out, and I think this is my winner of trendy versus traditional fry. <gasps> yeah! Okay, get out of here. For this. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Home style fries. Deserved. Let us know what you want to see next. We're going to be making more trendy versus traditional. Put it in the comments. Tell us what to do. Until next time.